All authority has been given to me, in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Have you ever sung that wonderful old song, Give Me the Bible? It is the Word of God, the inspired, inerrant, all-sufficient Word of God. And I think sometimes we sing that without really thinking about the consequences of uh, our request. Give me the Bible. You know, many people sing that song who really do not want the Bible. As a matter of fact, all of us, if we aren't very, very careful, we are somewhat like children. You remember a mother fixed a very fine meal and spread it, of course, on the table, and we go to the table. Now, if we were left uh, without uh, guardianship, without uh, care and uh, attention, what would you go for? <laughs> hey, I'd eat that dessert. Yes, sir, that good stuff. That, that's uh, no veggies. Nah, just the, just the dessert. Friends, that's somewhat the way we are when it comes to the Bible. We only want those parts that, uh, that please us. As a matter of fact, I, I, I want the peace, uh, the happiness, uh, the joy, uh, the contentment, the salvation, uh, with all of the sacrifice and the work punched out. Now, friends, the Bible doesn't work that way. You see, I live in a negative world. As a matter of fact, uh, Paul tells us, doesn't he, uh, that the Satan is the god of this world. What is that? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Check me out on these things. Satan is the god of this world, yes. And he is bent upon discrediting God and the Bible, you yes, say. Well, we have, a, we have a problem. We have an uphill fight in the first place, do we not? I need to appreciate the love of God that provided through the death of His Son instruction for my eternal welfare. Now, that takes commitment. That takes purpose. Uh, that requires sacrifice. It's necessary that I leave undone some things that the old flesh might uh, wish to accomplish, you know. I need to govern my life by a thus saith the Lord. Too many of us are like Jehoiakim. You remember in Jeremiah chapter 36, eh, Jeremiah had the scribe pen the inspired Word of God. Oh, and in those days it had to do with the invasion of uh, Jerusalem and the subjection of Judah to Babylonian captivity. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar came up and overran the city, but this is just prior to that. And Jeremiah is warning the people and instructing them as to how they could avoid the death and destruction of many, many people. Uh, but then when Baruch had finished writing this as the scribe, it was read to the leaders of the people, the important uh, people, and they were amazed. As a matter of fact, they were afraid. And they hid that uh, role, and they went before king, the king. And old Jehoiakim, the king, hearing what they said was disturbed, he said, bring the roll and read it. Now he is sitting in his throne, and it's in the wintertime. There is a brazier before him with a fire in it to keep him warm. And when they brought the roll of Jeremiah, uh, written by Veruch, uh, the scribe, he heard a part of it, and then he took his penknife and he cut it up. And he cut the pieces and threw them over in the uh, brazier, and they were burned. Uh, many of us are like that. We pay no attention to God's Word. We just simply chunk it out. Uh, like Jehoiakim, if we had a knife handy, we'd just cut it out. Or uh, many people might just as well take a pair of scissors and cut certain portions of God's Word out. You see, we only want that portion of God's Word 
which agrees with our preconceived ideas. Eh, wouldn't that be simple? Eh, yes, sir, that's the kind of thing, you know, the, the child, all dessert, yeah, the sweet stuff. Uh, never mind the veggies and the stuff that's good for you. It just give, friends, living the Christian life is not easy. The Lord made that clear in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, didn't he? What did he say? Narrow gate, straightened, a difficult way. Yes, sir. Uh, and Paul talks about girding up the loins of the mind. Uh, that's true. Governing my life by a thus saith the Lord. In this physical, sinful world, that's not easy. No, sir. It is difficult to walk the straight and the narrow way with the Lord. But I need to understand that to begin with and order my life by thus saith the Lord. Then I am happy. I'm content. Everything works well. As a matter of fact, it is a marvelous way of life. There's no question about that. Well, someone says, do you not have problems? Oh, yeah, the same old problems that uh, everyone else has. But then uh, oh, the world won't last. Uh, material wealth, uh, that belongs to God. He allows me to use it in his service. I remember Job, wealthiest man in the East, no question. And in a single day, all of his wealth was wiped out. What Job say? Oh, he said, uh, Jehovah giveth, Jehovah hath taken away. Blessed be the name of Jehovah. What? He put his trust in God Almighty. That's where we need to place our trust uh, today. It's the easiest thing in the world to be led astray. Ah, yes. I need to come to appreciate God's divine revelation written down so that you and I can read it and, uh, and understand it. You know, the modernists today will tell you that, oh, yes, the, the Bible is inspired uh, in spiritual matters. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, historical, uh, geographical, or scientific uh, matters, uh, it's, it's just not inspired. In other words, uh, the modernists would tell you the Bible is inspired but not inerrant. It contains uh, many errors. Uh, friend, <clears throat> the Bible is from God, and that's what we are talking about now and for the next few moments. Now, God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Preacher, say, uh, preacher what, what, what are you saying? Omnipotent. God is all-powerful omniscient, omniscience. Uh, God is all-knowing. Omnipresent, God is everywhere all of the time. Now you stop and think about this. God is all-powerful, all-knowing. He's everywhere all of the time. Then if there is one error in the Bible, it's not from God. No, no. That's doctrinal error. Now, you've got to be careful. Men today are rewriting the Bible, so you can pick up a book that might have the term Bible on it, and you may not be reading the Bible at all, no say. But the Bible, God's divine revelation, contains no doctrinal errors, none whatsoever. And I need to appreciate that fact. It, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it claims to be inspired, doesn't it? And, and what was it that Jesus said about uh, the law of Moses, for instance, in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 17 and 18? He said, Think not that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. Now listen to him. Till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle, the smallest characters and the Hebrew alphabet shall pass till all things be fulfilled. Wait, wait, wait. What are you saying, Lord? This, the Old Testament, is the Word of God given exclusively to the Jewish nation, the descendants of Abraham. We understand that. Oh, but it is the Word of God. Not one jot or one tittle shall in any wise pass from the law uh, till when? Till all things be fulfilled. Ah, that's certainly true. And the Lord, of course, explained that the law is a system of types and shadows and prophecies of which he is the antitype, the substance, and the fulfillment. Now, we need to appreciate that. So what did he say? Nothing, not even the smallest characters, will pass from the law 
No word of God is without power. Nothing shall pass from the law till all things be fulfilled. Now you remember what he said in Luke chapter 24 at verse 44, this is that which I said unto you, speaking to his apostles, that all things that are written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me have fulfillment. So Christ is the fulfillment of the Old Testament law. Why, certainly. It uh, was the guide to inform the Jews of the coming Messiah. It described him, and it looked forward to the coming of the Christ. Now, when Christ came, the law was fulfilled. And of course, he took it out of the way, having blotted out the bond written in ordinances, which was against us, which was contrary to us. He hath taken it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having despoiled the principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in respect of meat or drink or a new moon or a feast day, which are a shadow of the good things to come. But the body, <clears throat> the substance is Christ, Colossians 2, 14 through 17. So Christ fulfilled the law, and as a source of authority in matters of religion, it was taken out of the way. Now the same thing <clears throat> that was said of the law can be said of the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. Not one jot or tittle. Nothing in this divine blood-sealed covenant will be changed uh, till it is complete. It is fulfilled in its purpose. Oh, so then I'm going to be judged by the words contained in this book. Why, certainly. John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my sayings hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. What are you saying, preacher? Friends, the Word of God is living and active. The Word of God will abide. And the Word of God is the only law that regulates human life in a way that pleases God. So I need to order my life thereby because one day I'm going to be judged. Oh, and the judgment is saw a throne, a uh, great white throne, and he who sat upon it uh, before whom the heavens of the earth fled away, Oh, before him were gathered all the nations, and the books were opened, and another book, which is the book of life. Oh, and John tells us there that all who were not written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. What are you saying? Those who do not come into covenant relationship with the Almighty through simple obedience to this blood-sealed covenant will, of course, be eternally lost. That's judgment. We're going to be judged by the Word of God. And I need to appreciate that fact. Inspiration, oh yes, it is inspired of God. Uh, you remember uh, Jesus pointed out, and we've noted this many times, John 16, beginning oh, about uh, verse 7, He said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. And for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But if I go away, I'll send Him to you. And he, when he has come, will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father, and ye behold me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world hath been judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, howbeit you are not yet able to receive them. Now notice, but when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all truth. He shall not speak from himself, but whatsoever things he shall hear, these shall he speak. Oh, he shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine and shall declare it unto you. That's through verse 14, John chapter 16. So the Lord here promises the Holy Spirit to guide these apostles into all truth. That's correct. I remember that Paul affirmed that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. He said, we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God, that we may know the things which were freely given us of God, which things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Spirit teacheth, combining spiritual things with spiritual words. So Paul is affirming that the message contained in the blood seal covenant of Christ, known as the New Testament, is inspired. That word inspired it comes from the concept, the idea of breathing into. 
And so the inspired Word of God, Theonustus, uh, God breathed. Uh, this message is from God. This is God's divine Word, and it is eternal uh, in nature. By it, you and I will be judged. Friends, the message of this book is from God. It cannot be altered or changed. It is the basis of human redemption. And then when you stop to think about it, you know the Bible is from God. When you think about its physical makeup, uh, the word Bible does not appear in the text of the Bible, uh, but it is uh, most apropos. As a matter of fact, from Biblios, uh, book of books. Now that's true in two senses when it is applied to this divine revelation of the Almighty. The Bible is indeed a book of books. It is a library of 66 small books, 39 of which are in the Old Testament, 27 of them in the New Testament. So the Biblios, the book of books, is indeed just that, a book containing some 66 smaller books. But it is a book among books also. It is unique, distinct, different from all other books uh, in the world. There's no question. You see, the content of the Bible is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, both of joints and marrow, is quick to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 at verse 12. So the Bible contains that which touches my heart, changes my life. There is an amazing power in the words contained in God's will. How does this power come about? Oh, uh, this is the message of the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is how the Spirit impacts upon the heart of mankind. <clears throat> it is through God's divine revelation. That's why it is never a dead letter. That's why it is never ineffective. That's why every time you read it, it has meaning. And in consequence of your reading the Bible, you're either better or worse. Depends upon your attitude toward what you have read. You know, we need to understand God's divine revelation. It is the fruit of His love toward us. You see, God made us. He knows exactly what we need. Now, we live in a sinful world. We are in a fallen estate. Yes, there are many propensities and appetites and drives of the flesh which can be turned into lustful desires if we aren't very, very careful. Oh, but that's what God's Word helps us to regulate. Uh, God's Word enables me to understand that I am a spiritual being possessed of free moral agency, living in a body of flesh in a sinful environment where Satan has unlimited access. He can place every kind of obstacle in my presence. He can present to me every kind of temptation. How can I resist the temptations of life? By applying God's Word. I need to order my life by a thus saith the Lord. Now someone says, yes, but preacher, that's not easy. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's not easy. No say. It takes effort. It takes purpose. It takes a great deal of prayer. We have to go to God frequently. Oh, yes, we make mistakes. Uh, we sometimes fall short. There's no question about that. But I can talk to my Heavenly Father, and He loves me, and He will provide for my forgiveness if indeed I straighten up my life and walk circumspectly before Him. It is a continuous development, a continuous growth. As we ingest spiritual food, our faith is made stronger, and we draw closer and closer to Him who created us and provides for our redemption because we become more and more like His Son. Friends, that's what Christianity is all about. No, it isn't easy. It is focusing upon the true verities of life. Everything that I see or observe with the physical senses, how long will it last? Oh, not very long. Not very long. As a matter of fact, the old physical body, a very short time actually upon this earth. 
Now, everything material passes, but I'm not material primarily, right? Or I live in a physical body, true. And death is the separation of body and spirit. James chapter 2, verse 26, we understand that. Oh, but then uh, the spirit returns to God who gave it. Oh, the body back to the dust of the earth, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 at verse 7. So then I need to emphasize the lasting verities, the qualities that are durable. Uh, that's spiritual, not material, not physical. Friends, God's Word is amazing, and there is adequate evidence that it came from the all-powerful God who loves us. Uh, there's no question about that. You know, <clears throat> when you think about the fact that uh, it has hundreds of prophetic utterances contained therein, and every one of them fulfilled minutely. Uh, Jesus Christ came into this world, oh, in the fulfillment of many, many prophecies of the Old Testament. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 at verse 14. Oh, but it's interesting that in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, an angel of the Lord said to Joseph, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Uh, she shall bear a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And now Matthew explains that all this has come to pass, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken uh, by the prophet, saying, uh, The virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. That's Jesus Christ, took upon himself flesh and blood, deity indeed, God with us. And that's just one instance. There's over 300 uh, messianic prophecies in the Old Testament uh, dealing with the Messiah, uh, the Christ, and every one of them fulfilled minutely and exactly. Uh, there's no question about this book being uh, from God. You know, it's brevity is one thing that enables you to know that it is divine. The antediluvian world, 1,656 years were involved. That is, the period of time prior to the great flood. Did you know it's covered in just five short verses? The first five, or chapters rather, the first five chapters of the Bible? 1,650, how many volumes would man have written uh, uh, in that period of time, especially when it deals with the origin of the universe, the creation of man, uh, man's uh, rebellion against God, growing exceedingly and more and more wicked, that finally resulted in his destruction in the flood. How much would man have, friends, it's all contained in five rather brief chapters in the book of Genesis. It is amazing. Now, God does not satisfy my curiosity. No, no. God doesn't give me all of the details that would be very, very interesting. And men, of course, if they wrote about it and had the knowledge, would provide all of those things. But uh, the Bible contains only that which is essential to my proper relationship to the Almighty. And for that, I'm extremely thankful. For it would be a tome, a volume beyond my ability to read if God satisfied my curiosity, if He provided all things that I... No, no. Every scripture inspired of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto every good work. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. What was that? The scriptures inspired of God, this last will and testament of Jesus Christ, furnishes the man of God partially, no, no, completely, or unto most good, no, no, unto every good work. Oh, there is no deficiency. It doesn't satisfy my curiosity. No, no, I don't know all of the things that the people did in their daily lives, the type jobs they don't, no, no, that's not necessary. God provided only that which is essential to my right relationship with Himself. Friends, this book, its content, uh, inspired. There's no question. And of course, if you look, somebody says in the modernist, well now, scientifically, it's just not <laughs> scientifically, if indeed the Bible mentions it, 
it states it uh, perfectly. The Bible is not a book on modern science. No, no. It's a book on religion, the science of correct living. Oh, but when it makes a scientific statement, Herbert Spencer was the first to announce there are only five manifestations of the unknowable in existence, time, force, action, space, and matter. Ooh, that was hailed as a great announcement. Herbert Spencer just died a little over 200 years ago. When Moses picked up the pen of inspiration, he wrote, in the beginning time, God, force, created action, the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. He put all five of Herbert Spencer's fundamental principles in the first verse of the Bible, oh, but he put them there in the order in which Herbert Spencer announced them just a little over 200 years ago. Friends, when the Bible makes a scientific statement, it makes it perfectly. This is the inspired Word of God. I need to order my life thereby. Do you enjoy studying the Bible? Maybe something said today by Brother Watkins has made you desire to study more about God's Word. We have available to you, free of charge, a series of Bible lessons. These lessons begin with Bible basics, and by completing each one, you will gain a better understanding of God's Word. If you are interested in receiving a free audio cassette tape of today's program, contact us by calling 1-800-683-3120, or you can email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia, 30722. Please note the program number you see on your screen when you are ordering an audio cassette tape. Sometimes individuals contact us wanting to know more about the Church of the New Testament. Perhaps you want information of the Church of Christ. Contact us if this is your desire. Preaching the Gospel has been brought to you by the members of the Church of Christ and is under the oversight of the elders at Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. And now, back to James Watkins. Yes, it is a wonderful thing when I consider the love of God that made provision through the death of His Son for my salvation, but I would know nothing about it save for the work of the Holy Spirit who inerrantly inspired these apostles to record the message. And so today we have it down written between the sixth and eighth grade level, as we've said. Uh, and if you remove the proper names, the length of the average word is a little less than five letters. Readily readable, readily understandable, easy to accomplish? No, sir. No, sir. It demands my whole life, my entire attention. I must focus properly upon a thus saith the Lord. But when you think about the fact, that I'm going to live forever, and I'll only be here for a short time. Well, friends, I shouldn't give way to these material matters and the lusts of the flesh. I need to order my life by a thus saith the Lord. 